Tonight, a quick unboxing of a Super Micro Super Chassis called the CSE 721 TQ-250B. Now this is just a chassis, there's no motherboard, but there will be a power supply and a fan. So we'll have a look at what this looks like if you're trying to put together your own Super Server rather than buying a pre-assembled SYS model, like the 5028D-TN4T that I already have, the mini tower. All right, a couple things to notice. Looks like when ordering from Amazon, it ships from San Jose, which is near Supermicro. Not sure what that address is about. Um, anyhow, to an Amazon Fulfillment Center. You can buy these from Wired Zone and many other places as well. Okay, that's the box. The serial number is going to be a little bit different than I'm used to because it's not your normal system serial number because I don't know what motherboard you're going to put in here. Let's have a look inside. This is actually the first time I've seen one of these as just a chassis. Not sure how many pounds this is, but I'm guessing around 10 pounds. Okay, like all Super Micro products, it's actually rather easy to box, unbox, and rebox, meaning you can repackage it and no one's gonna really notice. Now, the paint job looks perfect. So, my server's been to Las Vegas and back, and it's done a bunch of user group appearances so after a while you get some fingerprints and some dings and scrapes here's a nice new chassis that looks quite perfect a little bit of new chassis smell what do we have here we have a kit so if you're short on 2.5 inch drive cables or different connectors that came with the original super server well here's your way to get extras of those as well if you're willing to buy a chassis Okay, <laughs> we're locked out by default, so that's that's an interesting default. So apparently they want me to get out the key just to get this thing open to see if everything looks good in here. Okay, and you're now seeing all the contents that this server came with. We've got the 2.5 inch screws. HDD screw pack, you've seen this in my other videos. The keys, which we just covered. The rail for the CD-ROM, in case you're going for old school CD-ROM. Motherboard screws, in case you need some of those. Sorry, I don't know if the focus is keeping up with me, but a little USB dust cover if you really want. There's two of them. And finally, power cord. Let's have a look at the front. Got some decent lighting for you there. Open the lid. Again, looks very clean. Maybe you have a damaged front bezel in your super server, or you need four caddies. Either way, this chassis has all those parts. So you do get a lot of spare parts by buying one of these. And there's a protective membrane on the Supermicro logo. You can go ahead and remove that if you'd like. I'm trying to keep fingerprints off it for now for some photos I'm gonna take uh, later tonight versus the new Compact systems, the ZNDs. I'm just going to wrap up this video by having a look at the back. So, obviously, you can see where your motherboard's going to go there. And you've got the various connectors. Now we can take off the cover. We'll go ahead and do that. Let's see if the thumb screws are finger tight. They are not. You are going to need a screwdriver to get those started. Most likely. Okay. Rather empty, so I just tilted the whole chassis there. So at this point, I'm going to put the keys away, put all the parts back in the bag, and wrap up this video by showing you the inside of the case. Now, as you go to slide this off, you want to use the two depressions on either side for your fingers. Push up in this blue lever to release and slide the lid off the back. And now we have usual Super Server parts. The drive back plane. Uh, it's got jumpers that you're going to want to make sure match an assembled system. That's very important if you want LEDs to work in front, everything to function as expected. SATA connectors for the drive plane. So obviously you've got 
some SATA cables to buy. This does not come with SATA cables. Motherboard standoffs are already installed. USB 3 header, power indicator, uh, power connections, excuse me, for the front panel, power switch. Um, what else? How about AC power? So, very important to point out, you never want to use the four pin. This four pin is for DC. You don't want to attach that to your motherboard. You only want to use the standard motherboard connector. You don't want to use both at once. That's bad. I've heard from multiple people. And then finally we have this bronze power supply rated at 250 watts. So that's about it. System chassis fan right there. You can even see its part number. Drive base, screws for those 2.5 inch base. Not so much, just the bracket, but you'll need to use the 2.5 inch screws that were included in that goodie bag that I showed you earlier. Um, so that's about it. My look at the Super Micro Super Chassis without a motherboard, which is adaptable for use on many different systems, including the Xeon D and some Core i7 and some Atoms. Hopefully you found this video helpful. Thanks for watching and for visiting Tinkertry.com.